Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So I got my COVID vaccine. And in this video, I'd like to help answer some of your most commonly asked questions to help you better understand the vaccines and to help you decide whether to become vaccinated if you're still on the fence. So I got unfortunate news recently that there's a COVID outbreak at the long-term care center that I work at, which sadly is not an isolated event. Just recently, the New York Times reported a similar situation in the US. Now the staff at the long-term care center I work at are over 90% vaccinated. Those few remaining that haven't been vaccinated might still have some questions and that's okay. Hopefully I can help answer them in this video. The first question is that people are worried about the side effects that they might get from these vaccines. And I'm here to reassure people that if you do happen to get side effects, they'll likely go away after a couple days. The side effects can include local pain from where the injection happens and also can include other systemic issues like headache, muscle pain, fever, fatigue, chills, and sweats. You get a painful arm because the vaccine ingredients are injected into your arm, but don't worry, the blood and the muscle will quickly flush out those vaccine ingredients and the body gets rid of that. The systemic side effects like fever or muscle aches are because of your immune system actively responding to the foreign particles in the vaccine. Your body is actually reacting against the antigens in the vaccine, and that's expected, that's what we want. It means that the immune system is mounting an effective response to give you protection down the road. This is a good thing. Never fear getting a vaccine because of these possible side effects. Now, what about other more dangerous side effects? Well, first of all, we have to clarify what are real side effects and what are just effects from life. You see, life never stops happening after somebody gets vaccinated. If somebody stubs their toe after vaccination, is that a result of vaccination? No, it's not. It's because they stubbed their toe. So some of the more dangerous or scary things you read about on the internet might be unrelated to the vaccine. Now, about blood clots in particular, with the AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines, those have been associated with the vaccine itself. But I'll just remind everybody that right now, the instances of people getting the blood clots from the vaccine is so rare. It's much rarer than getting blood clots from birth control pills, for example. The risk benefit trade-off of vaccinations is still far on the side of getting vaccinated and preventing the blood clots you probably would get if you do get COVID. Moreover, those blood clots that people might get, they're also treatable. Remember, for any medical intervention, we always balance the benefits versus the risks. The risk of you getting COVID and getting a blood clot or dying from that is far higher than the risk of getting that from the vaccine. Another question is, do these vaccines actually work? What about people who actually get COVID after they've been vaccinated? There's at least two considerations to that. The first is that vaccines take some time to work. The immune system takes time to recognize that part of the virus and mount an effective immune response against that part of the virus. The immune system needs time to develop the antibodies to mount the initial response and also to develop the immune memory cells that respond to future instances of infection. On average, it takes about two weeks for people to derive some protection after their first shot of the vaccine. And even after the second shot, it takes about one to two more weeks for us to say that the vaccine is fully effective. And I say fully effective in quotation marks because vaccines, just like any other shield, is never 100% protective against the virus. But vaccines are the best shield that we have. That's why we recommend people still follow all public health guidelines even after they're fully vaccinated. The other considerations are that depending on specific circumstances, a vaccine will work less effectively. For example, if you're in the ICU, you may not develop a sufficient immune response to the vaccine. Similarly, if you have an active COVID infection, you probably won't mount an effective response against the vaccine. If another vaccine was administered within 14 days of the COVID vaccine, that might also lower the effectiveness of the COVID vaccine. And finally, if you're a patient that's received convalescent plasma or antibody treatments against COVID within the last 90 days of the vaccination, that vaccine might not work as effectively as it could. So for these patients, we recommend that they defer getting vaccinated until these treatments are over. But that should not be the vast majority of people. The third question is, what if I'm allergic to the vaccine? Well, how do you know if you're allergic? Well, we should distinguish an allergy from a side effect. Side effects we already talked about, but a true allergy to the vaccine is very rare. Now here's a list of the vaccine ingredients in the mRNA vaccines that patients might be allergic to. Please review these ingredients carefully to make sure you're not allergic to any one of them. Now from our experience giving these vaccines so far, 
there's only been demonstrated to be about five allergic patients for every million doses of the vaccine given. Having said that, those with a confirmed allergy to any vaccine ingredient should not get the vaccine. If you don't know whether you're gonna become allergic or not, well, you gotta recognize the symptoms of an allergy, and there's four of them. Number one, respiratory issues, so if you can't breathe or have difficulty breathing. Number two is cardiovascular, so if you feel dizzy or feel palpitations, feel lightheaded. Number three is gastrointestinal, so if you feel nauseous, if you're gonna vomit, or if you have an upset stomach or diarrhea. Number four is skin-related, so if you have hives that come up throughout your skin, that's an allergy as well. A severe allergic reaction is called an anaphylactic reaction, where you have two or more of the symptoms we just talked about. That's very rare. If you happen to have had anaphylaxis in the past, you can still get the vaccine. You should just wait an extra 15 minutes for a total of 30 minutes at the vaccination center. 90% of all anaphylactic reactions happen in the first 30 minutes after getting the injection. If you did have an anaphylactic reaction to the first dose of vaccine, you should not get your second dose. If you do happen to have other allergic reactions to the vaccine, for example, in a skin rash a couple weeks after your first shot, don't worry, because delayed onset allergic reactions to the first dose is not a reason not to get your second dose. So you can still get your second dose if you want to. In general, if you have a more complicated past medical history, you should talk with your family doctor. Now, what if you have a disease of the immune system or if you're immunocompromised. Well, vaccines work by boosting the immune system against the virus. That's why the initial studies of the vaccines were never tried on immunocompromised patients. But what we do know is even if you're immunosuppressed, the vaccine isn't going to be dangerous for you to take. The COVID vaccines don't contain any live virus or any functional viruses. They will not cause COVID-19 and they will not cause any other viral diseases. If you're on an immune suppressing therapy, that might reduce the body's immune response against the vaccine, but that's not a reason not to take the vaccine because some protection is better than no protection at all. Of course, if you're one of the rare patients who have cancers of the immune system, some cancers can render the immune system non-functional. Talk to your oncologist, especially if you're about to get cancer treatment, especially bone marrow transplants or other specialized therapies. And you can always check in with your own family physician regarding your own personal circumstances. Finally, one of the more common questions is, why can't I pick the vaccine that I get? Can I hold out and wait until I get the vaccine that's shown the highest percentage benefit against viral infection that was measured during their initial studies? Well, that's one of the things that I don't think the media has gotten quite right. You can't actually compare between different studies and you can't actually compare the efficacy numbers from vaccine to vaccine. Now, if you're a hockey fan, you can think about it like this. Imagine the best hockey player in the world, Wayne Gretzky. He had good days and bad days. He could probably score more points against a group of peewees than against a group of NHL All-Stars. But regardless of who he's competing against, he's still Wayne Gretzky. Similarly, a great vaccine will perform differently under different circumstances. For example, the AstraZeneca vaccine was studied at a different time and different locations than the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. There were higher COVID case counts during the time of the AstraZeneca vaccine in the locations they were studied than during the time of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine trials. Also, when we talk about percentage efficacy against viral infection, what's perhaps more important than just the number of viral infections are the deaths and hospitalizations and other bad consequences caused by an infection. And the studies have shown that all the different vaccines are excellent at preventing deaths and hospitalizations against COVID. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> So that was a video explaining some of the most commonly asked questions about the COVID vaccines. Hopefully they better help you understand your decision to get vaccinated, or at least helps you in making a decision one way or another. Once again, this is not medical advice. If you're looking for medical advice, please contact your own family physician. That's it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I got my vaccine, now it's your turn. Let's get out there and help protect yourselves and protect other people and end this pandemic once and for all.